Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for, for joining today. I know you've heard from quite a few uh, different realms, different uh, folks here at the Alzheimer's Association. Uh, and I'm very excited to join you for, for this presentation about the Healthy Brain Initiative, uh, diving a little further into what you just heard um, from Edie Yao, my colleague uh, on the diversity inclusion team. My name is John Sheehan. I'm the Associate Director of the Healthy Brain Initiative for the Alzheimer's Association. Uh, and I'm going to walk through a different part of the Healthy Brain Initiative, uh, one that focuses on state and local governmental public health agencies so that we can really advance Alzheimer's through public health attention. Uh, and kind of knowing who is joining the audience, uh, who is likely to be in the audience today, I'm not going to spend too much time going over the uh, kind of the rationale, the facts and figures of, of Alzheimer's. You probably know this by heart or um, you've at least heard it today. Uh, but as we know, Alzheimer's is a, a growing issue. It has been growing for, for many, many years now uh, and is only projected to continue that trajectory uh, over the next uh, half decade. And so as we see the increase in, uh, in Alzheimer's prevalence, we know that the costs are gonna increase lockstep with that. Um, a large shoulder of that, uh, or a large portion of that is shouldered by public health agencies, particularly through their Medicaid programs. Uh, but it's also borne by the, the families uh, and individual private payers as well. Uh, and so we, we know that with the aging of the baby boom generation, uh, the number of Americans living with Alzheimer's dementia uh, is going to uh, over double by mid-century. Uh, and the public health approach is really here to help lower that trajectory, help even it off, and hopefully reverse the trajectory eventually. Uh, so the Healthy Brain Initiative, you've heard uh, a few things about it today. Uh, but to give you a, kind of take a, a step back and um, start from the very beginning, I want to give you an introduction of how we came to be where we are today. Back in 20, uh, 2005, the Alzheimer's Association and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention really recognized that with the, the shift in demographic trends, uh, with, the, with the aging population, with age being the greatest risk factor for developing dementia, uh, a public health response was essential to, to lower that trajectory to, to change health outcomes. Uh, and so in 2005, we partnered with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to originate the Healthy Brain Initiative, uh, kind of taking uh, what, what CDC is known for, their public health population level approaches, uh, and applying that to Alzheimer's dementia and caregiving, where that public health approach really hadn't been applied to previously. Uh, the overall purpose and goal of the Healthy Brain Initiative is really to advance cognitive health as a central component, an integral component, of overall public health practice. Uh, and since 2005, uh, a lot of work has happened. I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of that just so you get a, uh, an overview of the history, and then we'll dive into the state and local response. On your screen, you see uh, what I like to call our roadmap map. Uh, so how, what the history of the Healthy Brain Initiative uh, has actually been. And I'm not gonna go through each of these individual uh, items here, but do want to point out a few highlights uh, for you just to kind of know where we've been to give you an idea of where we're going. Uh, each of the four uh, little square uh, cover shots that you see, uh, those are our, our individual roadmaps. Uh, you just heard about the, health, uh, the Healthy Brain Initiative roadmap for Indian country. The other three are the roadmaps for state and local public health response. Uh, so we've been publishing these roadmaps as frameworks, as guides for that public health response um, ever since 2007. And we're actually about to begin uh, the process for updating and developing the fourth iteration of the state and local roadmap, uh, hopefully to come out in uh, the end of 2023. Uh, so that's the, the four kind of square screenshots that you see on there. But other highlights on here uh, are reflected on the data. Uh, so in 2009, the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System added two specific modules that really relate to the Healthy Brain Initiative, one that assesses cognitive health among adults age 45 and older, and another module that assesses caregiving among uh, adults aged 18 and over, uh, including dementia caregivers. Uh, so collecting, since 2009, collecting that state-based data has been essential to not only outline, um, uh, frame, understand the scope and burden of cognitive health, of caregiving concerns, uh, but really help drive and, uh, and, and shape our action, the public health response to that. Uh, similarly, on the behavioral risk factor or to the behavioral risk factor surveillance system, healthy people added objectives specific to dementia uh, first in the 2020 framework, 2020 framework, excuse me, uh, which started in, in 2010, and then continued that through the new newest iteration, <clears throat> the 2030 framework, uh, which just came out uh, last year. So these are uh, uh, 
national uh, objectives, national measures, national goals uh, that the public health community broadly writ uh, are working to uh, either Im improve or, or uh, are working to improve the health and, uh, and well-being of people living with dementia, uh, increasing early detection and diagnosis, reducing preventable hospitalizations, uh, and helping those at the earliest warning signs of, of cognitive decline uh, talk to their healthcare providers about those cognitive difficulties. So these, these two data things, the BRIFIS and the, the uh, behavior, excuse me, the uh, Healthy People 2030 framework really provide that uh, essential component of public health work. Uh, the data, understanding the scope, understanding the burden, understanding the impact. Uh, and the Healthy Brain Initiative has been essential to, to those two uh, data collection methods, uh, data analysis methods, uh, since, the, uh, since the early 2000s. And the final thing that I want to highlight on here is, um, is a, I'll call it like a corollary, a, a sister kind of companion program called the uh, Building Our Largest Dementia Infrastructure for Alzheimer's. Uh, this is, uh, you'll often hear it as the BOLD Act, uh, but this was legislation that established um, de designated funding for uh, to CDC to then um, pass through to state, local, and tribal agencies uh, to really engage on these healthy brain initiative topics, to engage on risk reduction for cognitive decline or early detection and diagnosis um, for dementia caregiving, uh, but really providing that infrastructure, the, the funding, the resources necessary uh, so that public health agencies at the state, local, and tribal level could actually get out into their communities and begin uh, making some of these, these changes that we know are essential. So the Healthy Brain Initiative is a, it's a collaborative. It is a, uh, a network of partners uh, kind of working towards uh, united goals. And uh, as I mentioned, the Alzheimer's Association and CDC were right there at, at the uh, origin of the Healthy Brain Initiative. And we've continued to be very, very strong partners ever since. The CDC Alzheimer's Disease and Healthy Aging Program uh, actually leads the efforts of the Healthy Brain Initiative overall uh, and, and actually funds and awards a variety of partners uh, underneath the HBI framework to carry out that, that central component, cognitive health into public health practice. So we, the Alzheimer's Association, we're, uh, we provide nationwide coordination, um, working mostly with state and local public health agencies. Uh, but as you just heard from, uh, from my colleague, uh, beginning work with the, the tribal public health authorities uh, in, in a wide variety of, of arenas across the country. And then we have uh, uh, additional HBI partners who focus in on uh, specific populations. Uh, we know that Alzheimer's and dementia have a, a disparate impact on, on given populations, and the Healthy Brain Initiative uh, tackles those head on by directing attention to specific populations. Uh, so you probably heard about the International Association for Indigenous Aging, IA squared, focused on the American Indian Alaska Native population. Uh, the University of Illinois at Chicago, as a Healthy Brain Initiative partner, uh, is focusing on, intellect on intellectual and developmental disabilities. Uh, this is a newer area for the Healthy Brain Initiative to work in, uh, but since uh, certain individuals with a, an intellectual or developmental disability are at a higher risk of later developing dementia, uh, focusing and necessitating attention on that population is what UIC is, is focused on through their HBI work. And finally, we have Us Against Alzheimer's, uh, who are focusing on the Black and Hispanic populations. Uh, this is uh, both um, uh, Black Americans and Hispanic Americans have a higher uh, prevalence of Alzheimer's. Uh, they have a higher prevalence of cognitive decline, uh, as well as associated risk factors. So working uh, with Us Against Alzheimer's um, as an HBI partner to really address those populations. Uh, You've heard about uh, the last one, uh, the last uh, little square screenshot that you see there, uh, the roadmap for Indian country. Uh, but the previous three are where I'm gonna spend the rest of my time talking about, and most specifically that third one here. Uh, so these are the state and local uh, Healthy Brain Initiative roadmaps, which I'll probably just call the roadmap or HBI roadmap for, for the rest of this presentation. <clears throat> these are um, expertly developed uh, guidance for those state and local public health leaders. Uh, they provide a, a flexible agenda. There's 25 actions in the current Healthy Brain Initiative roadmap uh, that is really grounded in the public health approach, which I'll walk through in, in just a minute here. 
Uh, but these are uh, to take the to take Alzheimer's as a public health issue, to use a population level approach. How can we apply our public health uh, regulatory authority? How can we apply our public health networks, our um, our reach and our our expertise to dementia, to cognitive health, to uh, to caregiving, to really improve the health and well-being of, of those in our in our communities. And a few key, <clears throat> excuse me, a few key decisions for the, the current iteration of the roadmap, uh, the third state and local roadmap, uh, it continues the focus uh, on those state and local public health agencies, uh, but brings in a wider variety of collaborating partners, um, specifically through the aging network, um, as well as researchers and in, in academics, uh, and other um, public health sectors, other public sectors, uh, including uh, the general business population. Um, bringing in, since dementia touches, uh, touches people in every aspect of their life, having a, a broad network uh, was an essential component to, to the structure of the HBI roadmap. The, the iteration that we're talking about today, the third roadmap, also adopted a life course perspective, which I have a, a graphic in just another slide, uh, but really kind of taking, taking what public health knows about risk reduction and development of, of comorbid conditions. Uh, throughout life and applying that to the science that is now indicating uh, the, that the earliest warning signs of, of dementia may actually be indicators of, uh, of changes in the brain that have been happening for years. Uh, so applying a life course perspective in order to reach as many people uh, at the earliest intervention uh, possible in order to, again, improve those health, uh, health outcomes over the long term. <clears throat> The HBI roadmap is, uh, as I said, it has a flexible agenda of 25 actions, uh, but these are really designed um, very broadly. They're, they're written to, uh, to elevate impact uh, in order to not just um, offer very structured uh, yes and no actions. Uh, public health agencies should do this and, and do this, uh, but really to allow public health agencies to respond to their jurisdictions uh, to their populations and tailor each of the individual actions to the unique needs and strengths of the individual community. Um, it emphasizes changes at the policies, systems, and environmental level uh, in order to, to use that really broad uh, public health power to uh, impact as many people as possible. There's a much bigger emphasis on dementia caregiving and uh, increasing the amount of research and evidence uh, that, that has existed before. Uh, and public health is, I think, very much on board now with Alzheimer's as a public health issue, uh, with cognitive health as a, a public health issue, and is really beginning to come around on this dementia caregiving aspect and, and caregiving more generally, uh, recognizing that each of these three, three issue areas really does impact a large majority of people uh, or a large swath of people uh, throughout any given community uh, and impacts their health in, in many negative ways. So bringing that broad public health uh, attention to each of these individual topics uh, has been a, a huge uh, shift in, in mindset, I'd say, over the last five years. As many of you are public health professionals know, uh, there's a, a much bigger, much, much needed uh, emphasis on reducing health disparities, increasing health equity. Uh, the third iteration of the roadmap is very much aligns with those efforts. And here just is a bigger screenshot of the cover itself. Uh, the, the official name of the HBA roadmap, State and Local Public Health Partnerships to Address Dementia, the 2018 through 2023 roadmap. Uh, we specifically designed it as a five-year document because we, uh, we've seen uh, the evidence, we've seen the research, uh, we've seen all of the data uh, is really rapidly changing. Uh, so giving us a five-year period allows us to, uh, to step back, examine the newest data that has come out, the newest evidence, uh, as well as the newest interventions and the newest, uh, the newest actions that public health agencies have taken. Examine that, uh, collate that, and, and develop it into the fourth iteration, which we're about to be, uh, we're about to embark on that, uh, that, that development period. So this third iteration, uh, which we're currently still, still using, uh, is designed to reduce the burden of dementia, to improve those health outcomes, and promote the health and well-being among both people living with dementia, as well as their caregivers. And here's that life course perspective. Uh, as you can see on your screen, uh, it doesn't give specific ages, but rather over the course of an individual's life, 
looking at how public health may intervene uh, to really improve their health and, and well being as far as cognitive health is concerned. Uh, the purple semicircle uh, in, under, uh, in the middle there represents the dementia continuum, uh, going from healthy cognitive functioning all the way through mild cognitive impairment and into dementia, while the blue bands around the outside represent uh, what public health can do uh, during, during that, that continuum. How can they apply their risk reduction powers, for, for example? How can they increase early detection and diagnosis or, or in, ensure quality of care, uh, enhance safety measures? Uh, public health has a role in each of those blue areas uh, and applying them, taking those, those same strategies that we've used for diabetes, that we've used for heart disease, that we've used for cancer, applying it to dementia, applying it to cognitive health, uh, really to improve uh, this overall life course approach uh, to someone that may, may actually develop dementia. <clears throat> there are uh, five core issues, five core areas uh, within the HBI roadmap itself. Uh, you've heard me say a lot of these words already, risk reduction and, and risk identification, early detection and diagnosis, uh, dementia caregiving, uh, as well as, as kind of two methods for, for improving each of those issue areas, uh, en enhancing the education and training for professionals, as well as using data and evidence for action. Uh, the roadmap has these five core topics, kind of five core issue areas, uh, and they're actually divided into uh, the four essential service, or they align to uh, four essential services of public health, uh, that overarching framework for, for many public health agencies, uh, and specifically aligned to the monitor and evaluate domain, the educate and empower the, the nation domain, develop policies and mobilize partnerships, as well as assuring a competent workforce. So using a, uh, the existing kind of broad-based uh, essential services allows the roadmap to be easily incorporated into public health agency planning uh, initiatives, into existing programming, uh, to really align with what, what public health agencies have depth and expertise in, in order to, to improve those health outcomes. Uh, and I'm not going to go through each of the 25 actions, but did want to give you a snippet of what, uh, what each domain actually includes. Uh, the first up is our educate and empower domain. Uh, so this is really designed for the community at large, um, making sure that um, everyone that lives within, uh, within a state, for example, within New Mexico, the New Mexico Department of Health, can educate the entire public uh, about talking to, about, uh, about uh, cognitive difficulties and when they should be talking to their healthcare providers about cognitive difficulties. Uh, action E1, for instance. Uh, we can also, uh, the public health agencies across the state can increase knowledge about uh, risk reduction. Uh, how can they reduce their risk? Uh, what cognitive health, what should brain health look like across the entire lifespan? Uh, what are caregivers? Uh, what is their role? How can we attend to their health needs, uh, their health concerns, uh, so they can maintain not only their own well-being, but then continue providing the essential care that they do to their, uh, their loved one living with dementia? As well as uh, increasing access. This is a huge part of public health and particularly state public health agencies, but how can we actually improve uh, the access to supports and services not only for those living with dementia themselves, uh, but as well, for, as well as their caregivers, increasing and expanding that access. Our second domain is the develop policies and mobilize partnerships domain. Uh, so this is, uh, for example, a, a state agency stepping back and looking at their own existing policy structure and integrating the effective interventions and best practices into their policy structure. Uh, so this may be things like, uh, ensuring uh, funding notices include attention to cognitive health or in include attention to dementia caregiving. And maybe the Department of Health itself um, issuing a, an internal policy to support cognitive health practices uh, among the, the agency employees. There's a lot of different ways that public health agencies are, are accomplishing this, and I'd be happy to talk more about that. Um, but just actually using the, the full scope of an, agency, uh, an agency's authority to implement those effective policies. Educating policymakers, uh, the decision makers about cognitive health and about dementia caregiving, so that they can then make the best uh, informed decisions uh, for them, uh, for their authority. Our third domain, assure a competent workforce. 
Uh, this is all for uh, not only public health professionals, those working either within the agency or are in allied uh, public health organizations, but also healthcare providers, uh, ensuring that both the public health workforce and the healthcare workforce uh, understand the best available evidence about cognitive health, about dementia, about caregiving, uh, so that they can uh, take that information, take that knowledge and apply it to their own patient populations. Uh, ensuring that, uh, that dementia caregivers are very much included in, uh, in those discussions. Often caregivers uh, experience a lot of stress that comes along with caregiving, uh, which can have negative, uh, negative health outcomes. Uh, and allowing, ensuring that healthcare providers understand that connection and assess for that, that connection uh, is one of the essential services that public health can provide. And finally, our fourth domain, monitor and evaluate. Uh, this is all about um, data collection and then using that data to inform, inform outcomes. Uh, so we've talked about the behavioral risk factor surveillance system, continuing those two modules, as well as then taking that data and using it, understanding it, uh, and uh, uh, directing attention to address gaps, to address the, the highest impact uh, or the highest burden that we see from the data, using that data to really inform our public health programs and policies. <clears throat> This has been a, a large kind of theoretical uh, uh, explanation of the Healthy Brain Initiative writ large. Uh, so I want to kind of focus it in on what has happened in New Mexico. Uh, the uh, New Mexico Department of Health is actually one of the one of the earlier adopters of the Healthy Brain Initiative roadmap. Um, a couple of years ago, they actually issued, uh, developed and issued a, a full set of public service announcements, PSAs, as, as we most commonly refer to them. Uh, specifically on ways to reduce the risk of cognitive decline and promote overall cognitive health. Um, they were one of the first agencies to really take this, this larger, robust uh, uh, action on this public awareness front. Uh, and here you can see a screenshot of one of the PSAs uh, that came out um, in both a 60-second version as well as two 30-second versions. Um, again, on those risk factors, on, um, on the health promotion front, uh, just to really educate the public at large on cognitive health. <clears throat> One of the greatest things about this specific example uh, is the New Mexico Department of Health actually created them specifically for replication. Uh, they offered it to other public health agencies across the state. It wasn't just a uh, New Mexico only uh, uh, initiative, but actually uh, designed it so that it could specifically be used by other public health agencies uh, in different localities. Uh, and this was a wonderful, uh, <laughs> it was a wonderful program that a lot of local health departments in the state of Texas um, kind of word spread among all of them, um, that the, the great messages that, that were contained in the PSA were very applicable, um, the, the visual representation matched the population they were trying to reach. Uh, and so a lot of local health departments within the state of Texas uh, used the, the New Mexico uh, PSA version, uh, applied their own uh, logo, their own contact information, uh, but then just really, really amplified the, the reach and the impact of this, in, this uh, initiative. It was a, I think a great example of what collaboration can be, um, as well as taking a step back and looking at longer term on the sustainability aspect. That's one of the biggest issues that we have in public health is we have great ideas, we know the, the best practice and the best research, uh, develop a really great tool, get it out to the public, and then it, it can be difficult to, to continue that momentum uh, once we get it out there. And so this I thought was such a, a wonderful uh, creative way to ensure that sustainability, the efforts that go into uh, development of an actual program uh, get replicated and get expanded uh, in the future. Uh, I know you heard about the Roadmap for Indian Country uh, previously, so I don't wanna spend too much time on it, um, but did want to, to mention that since I'm talking broadly about the Healthy Brain Initiative, uh, the Healthy Brain Initiative Roadmap for Indian Country is a huge component of, of the HBI work that is happening now. Um, and we've seen a, a lot of uptake in New Mexico and other, other states across the country, other tribal nations across the country. Uh, and it's really exciting to see, uh, to see attention, time and concern um, dedicated to, to this, this particular population, this particular topic. And lastly, before I open it up for questions, I uh, did want to walk through the, the bold Infrastructure for Alzheimer's Act. Uh, since it is, while it's a separate program and a separate initiative, uh, very much aligns and actually has a direct, uh, direct 
uh, connections to the Healthy Brain Initiative. So I wanted to provide a bit of oversight on, on what BOLD is and what BOLD is doing. <clears throat> There's largely three components of BOLD. Um, again, it's headed up by CDC, the Alzheimer's Disease and Healthy Aging Program within CDC. Uh, and it's designed in three different buckets. Uh, the first one is to establish uh, Alzheimer's centers of excellence. Uh, and these are all on the, those core topics. So there's a center of excellence on risk reduction, center of excellence on dementia caregiving, and a center of excellence on early detection and diagnosis. Uh, each of those centers is tasked with developing uh, the best available evidence, the best interventions, uh, kind of looking at that particular topic uh, what can and should the broad public health uh, field be working on, deciding what that is, and, and then disseminating it out to the entire public health community. Um, so really the, developing the, the depth and expertise of those individual topic areas to then be used broadly by state, local, and tribal public health authorities. The third, or the second bucket here is, uh, is funding. Um, specifically for public health programs across the country. Uh, this is at the state, local, and tribal level, uh, but kind of uh, providing, providing the resources, providing the staffing, providing the funding, uh, so that public health agencies who are often strapped for, for resources uh, can actually dedicate time and focus to cognitive health, dementia, and caregiving concerns. Uh, and the third bucket is actually increasing uh, data data analysis, um, taking a broader approach to to uh, overall ish or overall data and evidence related to to, to dementia, um, deeper analysis, broader analysis, so that we can then um, assist not only the centers of excellence uh, but those bold programs to uh, to develop or to deliver the the best messages that we have. So to kind of wrap up in summary here. Uh, takeaways are uh, that Alzheimer's, as we know, is a it's, it's a growing issue, has been a growing issue, and it's a very costly condition that uh, that does affect millions of people in uh, in communities across or in every community across the country. The public health community has a responsibility and has the ability to strategically act uh, in order to change systems, policies, and environments uh, to help improve the health and, and well-being the health outcomes of those living with dementia and those affected by dementia. And the HBI roadmap is really designed for the state and local public health response uh, to help them uh, really chart a course to, to a better future, to improved health outcomes, uh, to reduce burden on uh, cognitive health, dementia, and caregiving concerns. So I will open it up to questions here, but there's some contact information uh, on the screen if you're looking for additional information. Happy to, to share uh, additional tidbits as I have them. And it looks like, uh, so Tommy, I'm just gonna jump into the, the first question that we have here. Uh, know more, knowing more about the uh, Center of Excellence that focuses on caregiving best practices. Yeah, so let me. Uh, so this is, uh, it's, it's a new area. The, the Bolt Centers of Excellence have just completed their first year of work, um, but each center has been really uh, focused on collating, gathering, developing uh, uh, the best available evidence on what, what interventions their specific center can, um, can and should promote. Uh, so the Bolt Center of Excellence on Dementia Caregiving is based out of the University of Minnesota. Uh, and right now they are pulling together um, best practices for, for public health approaches to caregiving uh, that they can go out and, um, and encourage public health agencies to, to adopt. Um, I don't know uh, exactly kind of where their work has, um, has ended up at this exact moment, but they do have a, a website, which I think is just called bolddementiacaregiving.org. Um, I can look that up in, uh, uh, while other questions come in. Um, but they are, one of the biggest things that they're focused on right now is the uh, increasing time and attention to the, uh, the disparities that we see among dementia caregivers. Uh, so one of the bigger focuses that they've actually had has been on the American Indian Alaska Native population who are caregivers themselves, uh, as well as looking at both Black and Hispanic caregivers uh, in addition, since there are associated risk factors, uh, associated uh, higher co comorbidities, um, more disparities, more burden, uh, and kind of examining, examining what those disparities are to then inform their, their best practice interventions. Let me see if I can't find that link for you. 
Are there other questions uh, that anyone has on the Healthy Brain Initiative or, uh, or the state and local response? It looks like there was a chat. Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, so just a, uh, since that was the, the question that came in, it is uh, bolddementiacaregiving.org, uh, where you can find more information about what the, the Center of Excellence on Dementia Caregiving has issued uh, thus far. Excellent. Well, thank you all for, for taking the time on a Saturday to, to learn more about this. It's, a, uh, it's an exciting area because there is so much momentum, there is so much growth in, uh, in this topic area. Uh, and I'm very excited to see uh, continued excellence come out of New Mexico because um, there's a there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of interest there's a lot of expertise uh, and there's a lot of excitement to to address these from public health concerns uh, from a public health approach because it, it, we do know it is such a large burden such a large problem and I think I am your last presentation before lunch uh, so if there are no further questions uh, I think I can go ahead and wrap up.